I'll mute myself. Or Chris, can you mute me? I will do that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. We have our Facebook stream set up. Um, cool. All right. So I'm going to get started. And as people join in, obviously, I'll let them in, you know, the you know, the deal. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and just get my screen shared real quick as well. And today we're going to be going over Facebook ad campaigns through command. And I've done this class quite a, quite a bit before and you know, Elise has done it and it's probably one of my favorite things in command to kind of work on. Um, and you know, they're constantly doing tweaks and updates to it to make it more efficient and easier to use. And let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna go into command and any sort of prerequisite to doing any sort of Facebook campaigns, you want to make sure you have a business page set up. And I'm pretty sure everybody on this call probably has one at this point. You know, we've done this class quite a few times. So if you have a Facebook page set up, you are good to go. Um, so the idea with these Facebook ad campaigns through command is that you can use them to generate leads. And as you can see on my dashboard here, I do have leads that are coming in. Obviously these are just um, some of my um, fake ones or leads that would have been coming in through my app. Actually, I have some signups from that. But the benefit of doing them through Facebook is that they do come into your database um, as well. And that's where you'll also see them here. So when you're running an ad campaign for, um, let's say it's a new listing or uh, just sold, or even if you're, you know, you're working in open house this weekend and you want to just kind of boost that for a little bit. Um, I think boosting might be the wrong word. I would say more of like a sponsored ad for it. Um, you can do it all through command now. So it's super easy and we're going to be working on that today. So again, my, my favorite, favorite piece of command is this red button here. So the red button is going to give you an, an outline of all the different applets that are currently in command. So all these little things you see on the left hand side are your applets. Um, and just to kind of go into chat. Um, the fact that it says leads a few seconds ago doesn't mean that they were looking. Um, Andy, I believe that's a glitch right now. And I noticed that earlier today as well. Um, so these are actually not from a few seconds ago. Um, I believe they have, um, they're, they're doing some sort of updates to the system right now. And it's actually saying that my leads are new when they're actually not. So we can just kind of disregard that for this time being. I think they're going to be fixing that. Um, I actually submitted feedback about that earlier. So good, good call, good, uh, good eye on that. Um, so going back into command now, we are, you know, I'm clicking on my red button here. And if you're ever curious, again, I like to mention the red button because it's the only red on the screen. And they did that purposely because your eye is going to go right to it. You're going to click it and you're going to say, OK, here's all the things inside of command. So we're going to be really working on just one piece of command today, which is campaigns. So we're not going to be having to go into multiple areas. I will say that um, with campaigns, you can actually also use designs as well. So if you're creating designs, let's say you created a nice graphic or a flyer or um, any sort of um, social media um, collateral, you can actually pull that into campaigns as well. And I'll show you how that works. Um, we're not going to be using that too much today, but I will show you how that works as well. So let's get started. We're going to click into campaigns. And if you haven't been in campaigns in the last maybe week or so, they have changed around their, um, their main menu here. So it's actually a dashboard now. And the dashboard's gonna give you some insightful, uh, insightful things like um, what, how your campaigns are doing, you know, what's, what's giving you the best um, lead capture for the certain amount um, you know, what's getting the most engagement. So as you're running your ads here, right between this box, which right now it says quick post, I'll have another box there and that's going to just give me an overview of my, um, best performing campaigns. 
So the idea is if you're using this quite a lot, you're going to have more analytics to look at. Um, right now, the analytics are still fairly basic, but I'm sure as this system grows, they're going to start giving you more expanded analytics. I know I've heard that from agents before, um, you know, where they can view more of the expanded analytics. So I'm hoping that comes soon in some sort of reporting system. Okay. Um, let's move along here. So dashboard, again, this is going to be where you can access your um, kind of like your main menu. And I like this a lot now because previously, if you wanted to connect any of your social accounts, you would have to go through settings um, or you would have to kind of do it as you're creating a new campaign if they weren't already connected. But with this system now, you can actually go to connect campaign, uh, connect more accounts. And you can see here, any accounts that I would have had connected, I can go ahead and connect through here as well. So it makes it just a little bit more of like a shortcut now. It makes it a little easier if you haven't already connected accounts. And then these little blue icons that you see here that are kind of looking like they're lit up. And that means that those are my currently connected accounts. And then I can also see what I have as far as paid accounts and social accounts as well. Very useful. The difference between the two, and we're not going to go too much into social posts right now or today rather. Um, social posts are just another name for your unpaid social media posts. So for example, if I'm going to be scheduling out just a, um, a standard post that I want on my business page, you can use the social posting aspect. And I like it a lot because you can actually use it to schedule posts in advance. And then they also give you these quick posts and the quick posts are awesome because they kind of set up the post for you. Um, I'm hoping they actually will expand this feature more as well, because then it would be useful for like new listing posts or um, maybe an open house type of post. Um, they used to have these set up for holidays. Right now they have them just for the consumer app. Um, so if you're looking to just even promote your consumer app right now, you can use those fancy quick posts to do that. Um, cool. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up our Facebook ad campaign. And the way we can do that is if we hit this button here, this little turquoise button on the right hand side, create a new, uh, create a new campaign. And we're going to click on the first option here called social ad. As you can see, it does say paid. So that means we're going to be paying for this campaign. And we're going to give it a campaign name. So I'll just say test. Today is the sixth, correct? Yep. Wednesday. We made it guys. We're almost there. Test 5.6. So just remember you need to have this here um, or else it's not going to let you move forward with the ad. I, I noticed, I noticed this quite a lot when people are trying to create ads, <laughs> they miss the top section and I kind of miss it sometimes too. It's not that very well lit up but you do need to have a campaign name. And it's important because this is actually gonna be how you can track it later on. So if you're doing it around a new property, I would put the property name there, it makes it easier to find when you're going back to look at maybe like the analytics or you're going to see where that um, particular leads coming from in the campaign, it makes it a little bit easier for you to manage later on. So just, just as a quick tip. Um, you're going to have here a set of goals you can choose from as well. Now you do have your standards advertising listings. You can also do multiple listings, which is also pretty cool. Each one has its own set of goals. So if I click on attract buyers, for example, this is going to show you finding buyers who are looking for agents to help them purchase a home. So in this case, if I'm doing any sort of, um, listing promotion, I might want to promote that out to attract buyers. So I'm actually going to use this one today. And from what I've heard, this is actually a, a more um, as far as the uh, engagement and reach, I've been hearing that attract buyers is probably the best option. So we're just going to use that as my example today. Needed some more, sorry. Um, let's go ahead and choose where we want to run this campaign to. And as I'm pulling that up, what is the difference between attracting buyers and advertising listings? Good question. So essentially when you're uh, clicking where it says attract buyers, 
it's going to try to format or find or use the algorithm to better format it for attracting buyers. So better reach for that versus attract uh, advertising a listing, which is going to pr uh, promote a listing and find potential buyers. So it kind of sounds like they're almost very similar. Um, but from my experience and what I've heard, the attract buyers is um, more suited better for that particular reason. So we're looking to um, attract buyers. Now, you can also say this is more so if I didn't already have a listing and I'm just kind of promoting something to promote myself um, to find buyers, that might be a reason why you use attract buyers instead versus advertising a listing where you might already have a listing that you're trying to promote. Um, so in either either case, I believe both of them will have the, the same sort of reach, but we're going to stick with the attract buyers for now. And again, the system is meant to be experimented with. So if you want to experiment with maybe multiple types of ads, give it a go and then see which one works better for you. Um, and I'm just going to let some people in here and we can actually start moving forward. So the, the last step here is going to say, where will you run this campaign to? You do have multiple channels here. So you can see I can do Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm only gonna be using Facebook for this particular example. Um, Instagram, I wanna do a class on, I just haven't had time to set one up yet. I might just do it as a video because I know some agents have been asking me about Instagram in particular. Um, so look out for that. I might have something on the calendar for next week. I'm thinking about maybe doing something for that because Instagram I'm getting more questions about nowadays. Um, so we're going to just run with the Facebook for now. And we're going to go ahead and hit set up campaign. So once you're good to go, we're going to hit set up campaign. And it's going to immediately bring me to this screen here, which is essentially our, our, our setup page. So very clean. It's going to be all step by step. So we're going to run through all these steps and then we're going to get that ad good to go. So for this particular ad, we're gonna select the listing and I'm gonna go ahead and just put all status, all listings. And I'm gonna use a property that I was helping an agent with and I can't remember the address. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through my notes here. Um, where's the photos? 174 Oaks Road. So 74 Oaks Road. And it's this one here, Wong Hill Township. I'm going to go ahead and hit select on that. Very nice looking property here. Nice photos as well. So as you can see, once you select a property, you are going to have the copy from that MLS listing appear as well. So I'm actually just going to cut this down a little bit. We're going to come back to it in a second. Now, what you can also do here is you can enter a headline, which will appear here. And I can say something like, um, can you see yourself in this home? So kind of like prompting a question that would capture or kind of lead the uh, potential leads eye. So you're using some sort of question and prompting them to then go ahead and click on this learn more button at some point. So with the description text, which is going to be led under here, we're just going to put something like click the learn more button to find out more info. So again, that's going to lead their eye to here, which would then have them click it with the lead gen ad that we're going to be setting up. Once they do that, we would be capturing their information. So the idea is that you're using these lead gen ads to essentially have your potential lead kind of curious about what you're leading them to. So in this case, I might lead them into some sort of landing page um, or a virtual tour perhaps. I can also use it to promote my mobile app, um, which in this case, if I just want them to um, be led to download my mobile app, I can also do that. So once we get to that section, we will see how you can do that too. Um, but let's go back to the main copy and we can say something like newly listed. Um, we can say set atop a beautiful hill 
on a much thought after street in where is where was this again? Long. I think this is Log Hill Township. And I spelt beautiful wrong. Good thing I have uh, Grammarly here. There you go. Um, newly listed at the top of a beautiful hill on a much sought after street in Long, Till, uh, Long Hill Township. Um, we can say something like minutes away from NYC transportation. Um, we could say like want to learn more. Ooh, sorry about that. Um, contact me today for more info. Um, now I see, I saw in some other ads, you can also put your phone number if you'd like. And then what I've been also hearing, um, and I was uh, seeing this in one of Elise's videos is that if you put the number in like this, it will actually create a link that you can click through on your mobile device. So if you wanna give them your phone number, you would type it in this type of format and then they would be able to click on that and um, essentially be able to call you as well. So it's a win-win really, because if they're contacting you, whether it be through the ad on the phone number or clicking through to capture their information to your database, you're still creating some sort of um, touch with that particular lead. Pretty cool. So we're gonna keep something like that. As you can see, I also wanna keep it under this 250 characters, they do they do mention uh, 125 or less. So I might even go back at some point and just kind of cut this down and make it a little bit more condensed. But otherwise, as long as I can kind of keep it where it's not cutting off here, I think it's still good. And you can also add emojis if you want to put a little bit of character into it. Um, let's go into chat. Um, Kim, you're all right, all good. Um, all right, so let's move forward here. So we have our main copy, as you can see, we have our headline. Uh, our description text is in there now as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. They do have some guidelines or, around the type of uh, text you can add and the type of photos you can add. So if you're curious about those guidelines, you can always go and check those out. All right, so let's go to add media. So by default, it always will select the exterior of the home. So that's usually typically the first photo on the MLS anyway. So if you're, if you're using that as your first photo on the MLS, that's the photo it's gonna pull first. Um, test, test, uh, I, don't, I don't know who that is. We'll just come back to that. Um, now for add media, I can add up to five additional images for a total of six. And I can go ahead and hit this add more button and you can see here, it's gonna show me the interior images um, and some of the exterior images as well. So I wanna pull in the ones that might be best suited for my particular ad. Maybe I wanna showcase this nice little living to dining uh, to kitchen shot. Love that one. We're gonna go ahead and use that here. And then maybe I'll pull in some kitchen shots here. It's a very nice kitchen too. We'll go ahead and pull it in a kitchen shot. And just as a quick heads up as well, you notice that it's cropping it and it's not really giving me the full image. Um, with Facebook, it actually has these wide um, crops and you can't really change that without cropping a little bit of the photo. Um, now you can also do square images which I'm not a big fan of, especially if it's a wide angle shot, you wanna get the most out of that. So I usually keep it as wide and we'll crop it like that, it looks fine. Um, I just saw some stuff pop into chat here. Um, Tracy's asking, can we use under contract to close listings, multiple listings? Yes to all those, you can. So within command, you can pull from multiple types of statuses, and you can also pull from multiple listings. Um, there's an ads, there's a section under goals to choose multiple listings, and then you can actually pull in from multiple types. It's pretty cool. Um, if you're doing a generic listing, uh, generic lead gen ad, do you need to create the main image to pull into campaigns in designs? Um, you might wanna just expand on that question a little bit. I'm not sure what you're asking. 
So as you're, if you're typing that up, I'll go back, I'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, all right, so I'm choosing my ad media. Of course, I can go ahead and add additional images. You can also do video. And I highly suggest if you're gonna be doing any sort of video, just to keep it under 30 seconds, you know, at most 15 seconds is probably the most ideal. Um, just because as you have longer videos, it's gonna really, uh, you know, the average person's attention span on any sort of video is very short. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing any sort of video advertising. You wanna make sure the video is as short as it can be. Um, one thing I also learned is if you're also doing any sort of video, maybe having the main information you want to get across in the first few seconds. That way they would have already saw that. If you captured their attention after that point, you're good to go. But 15 to 30 seconds for any sort of video advertising is most ideal. Up to a minute, anything longer than that is definitely too much. Um, I'll also use this nice little forest shot. Who wouldn't want to be in that background right now? Cool. All right. So once you're satisfied with your ad media, you'll, you'll see here on the right hand side, it's also giving you this nice little preview. So it's showing you what the ad's going to potentially look like as we're building it. And this is your carousel. So these images will rotate through the ad. And then there's additionally, there's a last one, if we have a click through link, um, which after I put that in, you'll see, we're going to go ahead and just hit save ad media now. And I just want to make sure I have uh, everybody being admitted in here as I'm going through. All right, cool. So let's go into our final step here, which is the Facebook ad channel options. So we're going to go ahead and configure the ad now. We're going to go ahead and hit that button. And as I mentioned in the very beginning, you wanna make sure you do have a business page set up and you wanna make sure that you do have it connected within command as well, which I showed you in the dashboard section. Um, you'll notice here, if I click pages, I do have multiples. So if you're, you're an agent who has multiple business pages, make sure you're using the one that you really wanna have that promoted to. So I would also suggest if it's a page you've been using the most for any sort of business related content, use that one. So if you have two or three of them and you know you can only use the one, just use that one. So pages, that's good to go. We can see here on destination, you're gonna have two different types of destinations. Obviously the lead gen form is the one we're gonna be working with. They do have another one as well. Um, They do have another one as well, sorry. It's uh, using a site or landing page. So think of it almost as just like a passive link. If I click this and it was a site or landing page ad, you'd be going more so for reach versus lead gen because that's gonna just basically take that person directly to your, your um, follow-up destination link versus having them having to fill out something first. So just as a quick kind of um, exclamation, explanation, sorry, <laughs> explanation about what a Facebook lead gen, gen form does. Um, when a person clicks on that learn more button, they will be prompted to submit their information. And that information that they are prompted to submit is gonna be auto populated from whatever they use to sign up to Facebook with. So a lot of the questions I get, and I'm sure Elise also gets, is the, uh, the, the, the information that the lead is providing to you. Um, if I signed up for Facebook, let's say, um, you know, when Facebook first came out, you had to actually sign up with a college URL or a college email. So if I was um, clicking through that ad and I provided you a college email that I don't even use anymore, that's because that would have been the email that I used to sign up to Facebook or if I was using a number that wasn't even the same number anymore. That's because Facebook is actually pulling in that information from when they first, you know, if when they, whenever they created that account or if they haven't updated it in ages, it's gonna use whatever's on file. They could obviously change that if they wanted to, but most of the time if people are clicking through, they might just be trying to click through to get 
through it as quick as possible. So just kind of keep that in mind when you actually see the leads come in. Um, I'm also going to mention when we're doing the more detailed targeting, we're going to be trying to kind of narrow down who we're actually sending this out to as well. Um, let's pull up my text here. So Kim just kind of expanded on her question. Um, she's saying, I don't have any listings, so I'm trying to do more of a lifestyle neighborhood ad to generate leads. Um, there's no image library to access in campaigns. So I do need to create the main images and designs, use a blank template to pull into campaigns, similar to how you pulled in the images from the MLS. Um, to answer your question, and I will just kind of back up for one second here. Um, let's, let's, let's go here and go back to add media. So if I, if I actually go back to add more, there's an option here called add images. And then you can actually select if I created like a neighborhood um, market update. If I go to browse design library, you can actually see here, it's gonna allow me to pull in images that I've created in the past. So let's say I'm gonna use this market update one. So because I created it in my designs and it's saved in my library, I can actually pull it into a campaign. So that's super useful if you're looking to use some of the designs you created and spent a lot of time on. Um, this one, I don't think I had saved right now, so that's probably why I can't pull it. But if I had one that I had um, completed and saved, I can go ahead and pull that directly into my design, uh, from my design library into the campaign. Um, alternatively, you can also download it and just kind of upload it here as well. You can just drag and drop it in, whatever you decide to do. Hope that answered your question. And then, cool, all right, awesome. And then Tracy had another question. So would it be better to set up a landing page and have them fill it out? So you could lead them to a landing page. And if you were gonna do that, I'd probably have them go directly to my agent site and have them sign up for my contact page. Alternatively, what you can also do is because the consumer app also requires some of that information, you can lead them to your consumer app. And if they sign up through that, they would also be providing you more accurate info. Um, so that would be how I would kind of alleviate that a little bit too. But you could do a landing page for sure. And we're gonna show you how you can do that. Um, let's go ahead and save ad media again. And we're just going back to the Facebook ad, back to the, the second step here, which was choosing my destination URL. So again, once the person, the lead, clicks through your ad and they're being prompted to submit their information, they will be redirected to a follow-up destination URL. And as I said, um, you know, it could be a landing page. It can go back to my agent um, app. It can go back to, or sorry, my consumer app rather. Um, it can go to a virtual tour link. It can go to, you know, a video. I think in this case, if I'm trying to kind of keep them within my world, I would probably lead them back to either my website, a landing page, or my consumer app. So in this case, for this particular example, I'm going to have them lead led back to my um, consumer app. And this is going to be the URL that's going to populate in there. So once they click that, they'll be actually prompted to download my app from their phone. Because most of the, I would say, a lot of the, the times people clicking through these ads would most likely be coming from a mobile device. So mobile device, um, but, you know, Facebook in general, a lot of people on their phone are going to be kind of scrolling through. And I know for me, at least, if I'm on Instagram, um, you know, I'm always seeing these ads pop up or sponsored posts. You know, most of the time, if it's something that's engaging to me, I'll definitely click it. So mobile devices are definitely going to be a huge place of where people are going to be coming in from. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Now, you can also use here, you know, I can manually put my own link, I can also choose from additional links that were set up on my website, as you can see. Um, or landing pages, I have quite a few of those here too. So you can either choose from a site in the drop down menu, you can copy and paste something in. Um, and then you would be good to go. 
and I saw something else in chat here. Uh, did they fix the app so it automatically makes us the realtor? <laughs> this was a question I literally got this morning from an agent. Um, what I've been finding as well is that if you um, had uninstalled the app and signed out of it and you re-downloaded re the app from the link provided from the agent, once they sign in again, they'll be connected with that said agent. So the agent that I was working with this morning, she sent me her app link. I actually um, signed out of my app. I reinstalled the app and she was my agent. So it does, it does work. I think the workaround that's actually not working right now is if they already had the app downloaded or signed in, it doesn't automatically connect you with that person from what I've gathered. Um, but the, the workaround that I found that works is, is signing out, uninstalling, and reinstalling from that app link, and it does connect you with the agent. So I just have a quick question, Chris. If I people have already had my app from before for years, mm -hmm. it was assigned to me, and now they're getting my new app, yeah. you have to undo the old app and, and redo the new app, or will it automatically? If yeah, the th if you sent them a, a link back to your new app, but they were already connected with you in the past, they would just have to connect, they would have to create an account under the new app and they should already be connected with you. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you. Um, and then Tracy, you had an additional question here. If we send them to the consumer app, it won't be on that listing though, correct? Um, they, won't be, they won't be sent back information from this particular listing. Um, but that was my suggestion as a way to kind of, um, like I mentioned, keeping them in your world. You can also use um, a link back to your, if you created a landing page for that listing, really just depends on what type of um, objective you're trying to accomplish. But you could link them back to a landing page for that particular listing. I'm just using the app as my example today. All right, so for the next step here, we gotta do our ad targeting. And the ad targeting is gonna be where we wanna have that ad placed. So in this case, we do have a listing here that is currently defaulting to Fort Lee. It's just using my location settings at the moment. But let's say we wanna use somewhere around where this listing is. Um, I can use custom settings. And what I can do is I can choose, you know, any sort of location that I might want to promote that listing out to. So let's say I want to really kind of focus on people relocating maybe from South Jersey. We, we're just going to use that as an example. You know, we can put something even like the county name. We can put like Ocean County, New Jersey. So we would be targeting essentially that full county. And then we can do the mile radius of 20 miles. So let's say we're going to try to um, focus on that particular area. We're going to do a 20 mile radius around that. This is the default radius and it's the one suggested by Facebook to use. Um, anything lower than that, 15 is the, is the minimum, but I've, you know, I've gathered that this is not really good for reach at all. So keeping it at 20 miles, or you can even go a few more over, 24 miles, 25 miles would be, you know, probably within that ideal range. And then if we go to expert targeting, oh, and um, just as a quick kind of ex explanation about what these are, targeting in my database. Now, this is a feature that I've, um, it's, it's not, fully up and running yet, but the idea is that if you were doing target my database, you would be able to um, essentially target people within your own database and have that ad placed in front of them instead of going out to a, um, an unknown group of people that you're trying to target. So let's say I have like 200 people in my database that are tagged as buyers. Maybe I want to place that ad right in front of their Facebook page versus a custom audience that I'm creating from scratch, if that makes sense. Again, this is going to be primarily focused on just your database. Targeting a custom audience is going to be um, targeting an audience that we're creating from scratch here as we're doing. So we're using the location settings and then we're going to be doing some um, additional expert targeting. 
don't get intimidated by it saying expert targeting. You're really only just selecting what type of interest that person might have. So it makes it sound way more fancy than it is, but we're gonna go ahead and click this. And you're gonna notice here, it's gonna have a little search bar and then an interest drop down menu. So if you're like me, who gets stumped sometimes by the things I should be using, you can use this list to kind of help you out just to get some ideas. Um, and then here, um, Patty, yes, if they are in your database tagged as buyers and you want to specifically target them for that ad, you would want to make sure that they're, they're tagged as such. Yeah, good question. Um, once that feature is kind of fully up and running, I'll probably explain it more in detail once we have um, a better way to do it. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use kind of like the the, the, the essentials, which is, you know, Zillow is a big one. And then I'll also do something like realtor.com. And then maybe I'll also do um, some uh, additional interests like a commuting person, I'll use commuting. And then even things like real estate, you know, that's obviously one we can put as well. Um, we'll do Let's see, I thought they had just real estate as one, but it looks like maybe they don't right now. Anyway, it's all good. We'll do something like luxury, uh, I think luxury property. We'll just use that too, because this looks like more of a higher end listing. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit save selection. I probably would put maybe up to five interests here just to kind of narrow down my audience. I have four right now, I think that's good. Now, once you're satisfied with the audience that you created, you can go ahead and hit this button here that says save Facebook ad. And we're gonna go ahead and click that. The next step we wanna do is click where it says duration and budget. And this is where you can set how many days you wanna run the ad for and then how much do you wanna spend as your total budget. So the 10 days is typically your default $30 is a default and then $3 per day is the the maximum amount it's going to spend per day for those 10 days um sherry saying logo spot doesn't fit our kw logo which is long what to do um i think a way to alleviate that because it is a longer logo you can use on ad media you can put the position as left that way the at the the um, the logo would be showing up on the left hand side and it would run this way versus running into the side of the right. Does that make sense? I think I can even use one as an example here. Let's do that real quick. And go ahead and I'll use the, uh, the Valley logo. Um, so let's go ahead and use the PNG or actually let's use the white one. I think it'll work better on this background here. Let's go ahead and use the white. And we're going to upload that logo in. You see right now it's on the right hand side here. Now, if I wanted it to appear on the left, we can have it appear on the left hand side and that way it's not going to, it didn't run to the right for me, but if I wanted it to appear, so it's more so, um, you know, not taking up a lot of space on the right hand side and not potentially running into the right, we can just use it on the left. I hope that makes sense. Yes, but doesn't work on the logo I have. Um, maybe maybe send me the logo after this class and I can take a look at it. Um, if you have a team logo or a custom logo, that's another, um, another thing. So we are towards the end of our ad, right? We're gonna be just setting up our duration and budget. So the duration and budget really is gonna be um, you know, whatever you, you're really willing to spend, but I know for the, the kind of like the max or even like the, the average 10 days, $30 budget, you know, 15 days I, I hear is typically an average. We can say 15 days here and we can do a budget of about $50. So we're essentially spending this amount per day 
um, over the course of $50 for the total budget. Again, $30 is your, your pretty much your standard. And I would say for even that amount, you're still gonna get a pretty good amount of um, reach out of it per day, which is pretty awesome. Um, will the logo come up on every image? It will. Mm -hmm. It's basically just a watermark. Um, so with a $30 budget for the total campaign, you're going to be spending up to $3 per day. And I feel like that's a pretty good average amount. You know, you're going to get a pretty good amount of reach. Um, from what I've been seeing, the average amount um, spent per lead is usually between, um, I've been even seeing as low as like 60 cents. So, you know, I would say the average is around a dollar per lead. You know, I think that's the average. But you can see here, once you have it set up, the next thing we want to do is go to where it says publish campaign. And then it's going to give me an option here to just kind of recap what I'm doing. You know, I'm going to be spending $10, uh, um, 10 days with a budget of $30. And it's going to ask me what payment do I want to use to get that ad started. And once I have that good, good to go, I can hit create campaign. I'm going to save this right now. So if you decide you need to come back to this later, you can save it as a draft. Once you have that created, you're going to be led back to the screen here and you're going to notice a few different status messages. So there's a status here. Right now I have some drafts. Now if I had an ad that's currently being reviewed, you will have a button here that says re in review. One other thing I also will mention is that, um, let's go back into the ad real quick. One thing I'll also mention is that if you're running an ad, it does take about a day for it to go through the Facebook review process. So you might notice here that it's actually asking me to run it the day after. So because it takes about a day for it to approve, they will start running it the day after you have this set up. So let's say I um, want to have this ad set up today. I can set it up today and then it will run tomorrow morning or sometime tomorrow. Um, or let's say I want to have it run over the weekend. I can go ahead and put it for Friday. So you see here, I can adjust this, but it's never going to let me do it for the same day. You see? So just as a quick heads up, that's just, that's just Facebook. It's not anything to do with KW. They use that because they have to go through a, um, they have like a, a review process to make sure the ad are compliant. So I hope that made sense. Um, let's save this again. So after you have it under the review status, once it goes to review, it's going to be turned to active. Once it's turned to active, you'll be able to track your cost per impression, your cost per click, and your cost per lead capture. And if you're like me, who sometimes forgets what these things mean, you can actually click this little I button, and it gives you a nice little overview of what those different messages mean. Very useful. So, one question I get a lot is once you're actually capturing the leads, how do you get notified? You'll get notified through the Kelly app. So that's one way. And the Kelly app is going to let you know exactly when they were captured. The second way you can, you can track them is through this dashboard here under paid ads. And you'll be able to actually click through where it says CPLC. There'll be a number here that you can click through. And that'll take you directly to that ad's particular leads captured. The third way is that you can go into your home screen. And your home screen, you can see here, I have my recent leads box right on the top. I can also track the leads from there. <clears throat> and if you're curious how I got that all the way to the top, you can actually go here, it says customize home. And the lead box is typically on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna apply that for a second. You're gonna notice that it's on the bottom all the way. So, by nature, you're definitely going to miss this because if you're not already looking on the top, you're probably not going to scroll all the way down. You're probably miss this right away. So what I would suggest doing is you can go to customize home and we can actually pull this box up to the top. And then what I can do is hit apply and that's going to bring that lead box to the top. You see, super useful. It's a nice little, uh, little tip there. Um,
so we are getting closer to the end of the class. Does anybody have any questions? I think actually were there some in chat? Let me just pull them up. Um, Patty's asking about the, the incentive here. Good question, Patty. So if you're, if you're like me, or if you're an agent who hasn't run an ad before, they are actually doing a promotion right now. So let's actually go back into my campaigns. So you notice as soon as I first came into the campaign section, there's a little box up here. So this box is basically saying, if you haven't created an ad before, we're gonna give you $25 off if you spend 75 or more. Basically, it's gonna give you a $50 ad, um, or you're gonna get a $75 ad for 50. So that's awesome. You're getting $25 off your first ad. And what I said before, you know, $50 is a pretty modest um, way to start for a new ad that you're just trying to get out there. And if you're gonna be spending 75, you're just gonna get that $25 off. So I feel like that's a really good incentive to create your first ad in here. Um, and also you'll probably get a lot more leads captured that way. Um, one other thing I also say is that the more that we use or take advantage of these incentives, the more likely we're going to get more types of these incentives from Facebook going forward. Because Facebook is a, a partner with us. They're going to give us a lot more of this stuff as much as we use it. So definitely take advantage of that if you haven't already done these. So it is only, it's only applying to new uh, first campaigns only. So if you see this box here under your camp, uh, under your campaign section, definitely take advantage of that. Um, just to go through a couple of these questions, um, is there a retargeting function? Currently not. There's going to be a, I've been hearing about a retargeting function, but I don't know when it's coming out. So look out for that in a, in a new update sometime soon, hopefully. Um, Andy's asking, can you show one more time um, yeah, yeah maybe what was your question Andy sorry it's the um, the um, campaign ad that had the stats how many days on the you know oh houses listed houses under contract so how you yeah got what I, how like, I got to that what I did was I went Let's go back into my um, edit ad screen. There we go. Ooh, it's going super slow. Just give me one sec. Basically what I did was when I went into upload images, instead of um, uploading an image, I asked for it to um, connect with my designs. So let's go into add media here. If I go to configure. And then if I go to add more, if we go up to here, it says add images. You can pull from your design library or you can upload. So if I go to choose from designs, it's gonna take me into my design library and I can go ahead and choose, you know, whichever one of these, let's see if this one will work. Yeah, so you see here now it's giving me my market update. I think that's also a really cool thing you can kind of pull an ad from. Just be careful. I know specifically for Facebook ads, they will look on and see how much text you have on the image. And that will kind of um, degrade the amount of reach you can get. It's just the Facebook thing right now too. But that's how you would do that. And I can hit save and that will be added into my ad. Cool. Um, Deepak is asking, do we have to use the 75 credit all at once? Um, you do. Yeah. So you have to create the ad with that 75 and then they will give you back the $25 credit. Um, I don't know the exact logistics around how the credit is given back to you, um, but I can find out. Sherry's asking, is that incentive? Is that incentive for just one ad? Can we create multiple? Um, can we create one image for multiple properties? Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, you would just have to create a design that has multiple images on it, perhaps. And then you might have like some sort of text around maybe if it's just, you know, 
recently under contracts in your area and it's just like a few different properties there. And Sherry, yes, you can have multiple images there. So even if you decide you wanna use multiple images for a different property, you can do that too. Um, Kim, you can only use up to six per ad, um, or in this case, um, sorry, it's five. So it's five images for the slideshow, as you can see. Um, unless you're doing a, if you're doing like a video slideshow, then you can have, I think you can have up to, um, for it to be like a short clip, um, Facebook, I know allows you to do a little bit more than that. Um, okay. And then I know I saw another question here. Should hashtags be used um, on the ads? I would probably discourage that. I, I wouldn't use hashtags for ads. The idea is that you're actually, the, the idea with hashtags is that you're using that as almost like a keyword as a search. When you're running an ad, you're actually kind of, uh, let me rephrase that. When you're running the ad, you don't really need to use hashtags because you're already kind of generating the reach that you're trying to do through the ad targeting itself. So when you're actually configuring it and you're setting up your location and the interest, you don't really need to use the hashtags for that. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, and okay, cool. Any, any other questions? How about a phone number and email? So yeah, good question. Um, I did put some, uh, I did put my phone number inside of the, um, the ad text here, as you can see. So that would be a way to contact me. Then I can also have maybe as my learn more, because if I'm going to lead them back to either a, a contact page or my consumer app, they would be, um, you know, filling out that form to, um, for me to follow up with them. I, I don't know if I would put my email in there though. I mean, you could, but I would probably leave that out and just have my phone number in there. Um, all right, so we're getting close to the end here. Um, if there's any other questions, I'll take another minute. Um, Gigi's asking, should the leads on the homepage be updated with the correct time that the lead came in? Um, yeah. <laughs> I think right now there's a bit of um, a glitch in the system here. I mentioned that in the beginning. It's actually showing that all my leads are all recently added. Um, this is this is reflected in real time too. So this wouldn't be saying a few seconds ago, it would say like 10 minutes ago or an hour ago or however many days ago. So I think right now they're probably working to fix that. And then another question in here, is there a better time or day to post ads that you would suggest? Um, so right now the, the, the command campaigns doesn't let you choose specific days and times to run it. It's only gonna be kind of running throughout the whole day. Um, I don't know if there's any sort of information about if the algorithm is placing it in different times for you. Um, if you're doing it through Facebook ads directly, you could actually do that. Um, in my opinion, um, if, even if you're just doing a regular Facebook post, I, I usually would mention like sometime early in the morning or, um, late at night. I found that like when I was doing analytics for stuff like emails and Facebook posts, um, anytime after 8 PM is usually the most engaged, but that's just, you know, what I've been noticing. So like later, later in the day, um, going into the night or early in the morning. Um, again, with the Facebook ads you're running through here, it doesn't let you choose the times that they run. Um, it could be something they might add in the future, but right now they don't. You, you, it just kind of runs it for you automatically. Hope that made sense to you. All right, cool. So I'm gonna get wrapped up here. Um, I'm gonna have this posted on YouTube, which I will, um, let me just link that back in the chat here. So we do have a YouTube channel that I've been getting our videos up into. It's the Bergen County Partners channel. In this, you'll be able to find any sort of videos like the Ask Gal calls, um, any of the videos that we've been doing for the classes here. Um, they'll all be posted in here for you to rewatch later on. And oop, where's my chat box here? Um, they will be posted in here later on for you to 
go back and watch. So let me go ahead and post that in there. And then, yeah, if anybody has any additional questions or you want to um, even set up an appointment with me, feel free to email me or, or text me. And um, yeah, cool. All right, thanks everybody. Hope everybody has a good rest of their day. Thanks, Chris. You too, thank all you. Right. Talk to you all soon. Thank you.